Hey okay, guys, as you guys know, what, today is Wednesday, so it's patch day, and we have a new patch to cover. So here are the patch 11.1 note rundown. But, instead of reading it from here, we're actually reading from here, haha, because they made six changes on those official patch notes, so we're just going to have to read it from here. And uh, please pardon if I cough, I am a little sick and under the weather, but I want to get this out to you guys. So, let's start at the top with the item buff. So, Grievous Wounds debuff duration is going from 2 to 3 seconds. Nice. I mean, that's just the overall good change. Shirelia's active movement speed is going from 40 to 60%. I honestly barely see this item get played. Uh, it's pretty good because it does the on hit damage buff to everyone around you. Just wish it was a little bit more damage for what it is since it's on active. Like, Mandate does more damage than it and it's not active. So I feel like that's a problem. Uh, I don't know if that will ever really get fixed. Shirelia's is kind of in a weird spot. Archangels has gone up by 5 AP and a Sapphire Crystal is replaced with an Amp Tome in the build path as well. Sapphire and then Seraph's Embrace also got the 5 AP as well, so when it evolves. And Ionian Boots of the City got 5 extra haste from 15 to 20 total. Nothing crazy on these. Uh, Archangel's already seen some more playing out of tiers, pretty good. 5 AP is just nice. The move speed on Shirelia is nice if you build it. It's kind of a niche item right now. And Lucidity Boots is nice too. And the Grievous Wings is probably the best part about those item buffs right there. And there's item adjustments, so there's the shifting burst into stats for Dustblade, Prowlers, Hextech, Night Harvested, Trinity Force, Gore Drinker, and Stride Breaker. So they're reducing the burst damage on those actives and the uh, effects, and then shifting it into stats. So they're just overall the same power level, they just wanted less systematic burst through items, and more on the champion's kit. And they're reverting run-ins back to its old self, going from 3,400 to 2,500 gold, so it's becoming 900 gold cheaper. Uh, it loses its 25 AD, so it's now going to give 0 AD. And the passive bolts do not scale from 40 to 70% of your attack damage based on level. It's going to be a flat 40% all the time now. And the pickaxe is replaced with the dagger in the build path. So this one's a really, really big change. And it could really shake up the ADC meta. So Kais is doing really well. And that's with people going run-ins and some people not going run-ins. But now she'll probably always go run-ins since it's 900 gold cheaper. Very easy item to buy can get you to your E power spike faster and 900 gold less to be spending is really really nice because then you get to hit the IE power spike as well faster so not only are you getting a faster spike but you're getting a faster upgrade as well and this goes the same for anyone else that wants to run in like uh, Aphelios and Jinx they probably won't become like top tier or anything but Kai'Sa probably will so it's cool to see run -ins get uh, in a better spot because it's kind of in a weird spot as is being so expensive but not yet that good it's kind of like a mix where a mana has the removed shock only applies to physical spells. They want to back on everything because some people like Quirky and Ezreal couldn't use it on certain abilities, which felt really bad. The total cost has been upped by 300 gold from 2600 to 2900. And the Sapphire Crystal went into a longsword in the build path. And they also reduced the shock's passive damage from 4% to 2.5% mana. And the all conversion mana from 2% to 2.5% mana compared to AD. So this sounds like a really complex change and the reason why I did it is like I said previously it felt really bad as Ezreal and Koyuki, the people who want to buy this, weren't able to proc it on their Q or the ultimate or the W and the E of Ezreal and stuff so it felt really bad. But they didn't want to revert it back and then people like Orianna and Azir start building it again. And it's okay if they want to build it but now the shock damage is cut in half completely. The build path is less supportive of it because less mana and more AD, and you get more AD conversion as well. So it's a little weird because they say it's the same power level for the actual ADCs, but less burst is kind of like, I, it's kind of hard to justify, especially when it's cut by 1.5% and you get 0.5% more conversion. Uh, we'll see how this one plays out. It's a little weird. It'll it should be nicer for the people who are building it, like as and Quirky, because they're gonna build it no matter what. So it's nice for them, but. I wonder if it will come back with Oriana and stuff. So we move on to the champion nerfs. Massey Q cooldown at max rank has been uh, up to from 14 seconds to 16, so two seconds there. Uh, nothing crazy, honestly. Uh, just kind of stops, I guess, the dust blade yees and then the voids. But it's not that big of a change. I feel like it will still be really good. Fiddlesticks' W cooldown is also going up by a second from at level one older to max. Really interesting changes. Uh, Fiddlesticks is a pretty good jungler. Just not top tier. A lot of people have really big problems with Hecarim, Olaf, Kha'Zix meta because of how fast they clear. So really interesting to change someone like Fiddlesticks. 
And then Pantheon will no longer get his health regen from 10 down to, to 9, so just round it down by 1, but it's not the uh, important part. The important part is his W empowered AD scaling went from 135, 165 to 120, 165. So they just lo uh, lowered at level 1 by 15%, which is pretty big because he does not put a point in his W ever, like aside from like level 3 and level 1 and 2. Like, he will max his Q and his E every time. So taking down 15% is quite a lot. And people want the Empower W since it gives 3 autos after. So that's a good one. Uh, it'll probably not be enough to stop him. He's really overtuned. does a lot of damage. But it's definitely a good step in the right direction. Maybe another small nerf can totally put him in place. Malphite's W damage armor ratio went from 15% to 10%. He's just doing too much with the new items. His E damage armor ratio is also went down 40 to 30%. Overall, just taking his damage down quite a bit. That one's pretty big, I, I feel like. The Ivory QCD went from 12 to 8 seconds to 14 to 10. Pretty big on this one as well. Uh, but Ivory does get a ton, a ton of haste. So he won't feel that bad later in the games when he has more items. His E Shield AP ratio went from 90 to 80% as well. Very upsetting, but very well justified. Ivory is an insane jungler right now. Especially if he doesn't get invaded early and stop denied. Then he just takes over games with how strong he becomes. The Notorious 2 AD off Graves. Man, how many times have we seen this change where Graves minus 2, minus 3, gains 2, gains 3 AD? It's really such a weird, weird change. And I I never see it do that much damage to him, so I don't understand it. They also nerf him until he has passive move speed from 20 to 45% increased move speed to 12 40%. This is due to the fact that they made her jungle clear insanely good now with where the Q is not doing full damage to the monsters. So they probably want to take some power out from her. Very interesting. I didn't think she was doing that good, but maybe she is. She was doing pretty all right, but I didn't think like good enough to those top tier jungles. So it was really disappointing to see them miss the mark on some of those jungles since I know jungle meta is so heavily debated right now. Now we got a champion buff. So Ryze's Q mana cost is going down from 40 to 40, 32. Pretty nice, especially because he spams it a lot. With those new uh, say off changes, it'll be really, really nice to see a double buff on Rise. Uh, Quiana's HP regen went up from 8.5 to 9. HP regen per level has also gone up, and her base AD went up by 2 as well. I've been seeing a lot of talk of Quiana coming on the Rise. She's not doing incredibly, incredibly well, but I have been seeing this new tier build with her. I wonder if it will lead to anything. I'm not exactly sure on that. Especially with the new mana main changes, maybe. Zaya's ECD went from 12 to 8 seconds to 10 to 8 seconds, so upping it at or lowering it early so you can have that more often. And the cost is going up by 10. I don't know if this will be enough to really make Zaya top tier, but she feels kind of strong right now, unless you're going into a meta pick where you just kind of get clapped. So I don't think I'll help it that much. Karma's E Shield base went from 80 to 100 to 80 to 240. Kind of nice. Uh, really weird change. I honestly didn't think about Karma. But I don't think she's not really doing that hot either, so good change nonetheless, I guess. It's anything is nice. Uh, Nari got a, a nice list of changes, pretty huge here. I'm sorry, my throat was getting a little try. Uh, Mega Q damage is going from 5 to 165 to 25 to 205. Mega Q slow is getting almost double from 1535 to 30 50%. Mega E dash range is up by 75, and many E attack speed from 4 to 6 seconds. These are absolutely massive changes, and this could push Nari to a really good top tier spot if they patch the bug where when Nari is at full rage, he doesn't apply W stacks right now. So there's a bug when he's admitting he's full rage, he does not apply any of his hyper stacks. If th that bug fix is in this patch with these buffs, I strongly believe Nari could become a very good pick, especially if shaping up for the LCS season. He'll probably be a pick or ban. Sivir's base mana went from 284 to 325. The Q down from 35, 95, 70, 130% bonus AD to 40, 100, 75, 135 bonus AD. Pretty nice buffs. Um, don't think it's going to take you to the top tier. Adding 5 more base damage and 5% AD bonus ratio is, it's nice, but it's not like more than like 20 to 30 damage ever. And the base man is also nice, but it's only about one more Q cost. Uh, Varus's Q mana cost went from 70 90 to 65 80, and the QCD went from 80 18 seconds, 10 seconds to 16 10. Uh, also, nice changes, but nothing crazy here. Uh, champion adjustments. This one's a very hot take on a hot topic to discuss. So, Yasuo and Yone's passive crit bonus is going from 100% doubled crit to 150% crit. 
and this is huge because now that means that they could get two crit or two crit items and have 100% crit. As stands now, they could buy two crit items, be at 80% crit, and then buy another crit item, be at 100% crit, and have the excess crit roll over into AD. With this change, you could buy your mythic and then one crit item, presumably IE, and you have 100% crit flat out right there. And they said that this would stay the same power level, they just get a spike harder a little bit and lose the power later since that, as you can tell, it went from 0.5 AD per 1% crit to 0.4 AD. But I personally don't feel that. I feel as Yas and Yone now don't have to buy more than two crit items, they won't. They just won't do it. I'm sure they'll just buy another bruiser item that will really help them, like Death Stance, Stair Axe, GA, or something else they need. Why would they go a third crit item if they're not incentivized to do it? Especially if they already have 100 crit. It seems really, really off to me. And I don't know if it's an adjustment. I it's a huge huge buff and I'm really scared to see it sorry about that I'm just a little sick but uh yeah that pretty much wraps up my patch 11.1 changes overall I thought it was a pretty good patch uh item wise it was pretty good and some of the nerfs are good especially the Malphite nerfs but I think they did miss the mark on the jungle change uh, jungle meta establishment kind of sucks but I'm sure they're just giving the time and I also definitely would have loved to see some rail changes on here but I think they're just taking it nice and slow with her. But she'll probably get a buff down the line as she's not doing so hot either. But that's about it for me, guys. Uh, if you made it to the end of the video, you're awesome. Comment down below Oreos or something. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Last time when you guys actually did that, I think that's awesome. And if you have any questions about this patch, feel free to ask them down below. Or if you have any questions you want to see them live, I'll be streaming after this video on Twitch. And I also stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. PST. And you can ask me any questions about League, Life, Anime, anything there, as I just love being on there and talking to you guys. And thank you for watching. That's about it. Stay safe out there and enjoy the rest of your day.